So here are some conditions under which a prenup is invalid. Number one, if it's not a written agreement, it must be in writing to be enforceable. Uh, contracts, all contracts don't have to be in writing, but a prenup does. Two, not properly executed. Both parties must sign the prenup before the wedding in order for the agreement to be considered valid. So you cannot go and do a prenup and 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 uh, and and you know after the fact and just sort of backdate it. You can't do that. Three, you were pressured. Uh, if if it can be proven that your spouse pressured you into signing that prenup, it ain't no judge going to honor that prenup. Four, you didn't read it. So if you get a prenup, make sure that your spouse reads the damn thing, because if they say I did not read it, then it can it, it can be invalid. Then, So uh, it says here, if your spouse to be puts a bunch of papers in front of you, including a premarital agreement and they ask you to sign them quickly, the premarital agreement may not be enforceable if you sign it without reading it. Uh, a lot of people sign contracts without reading them, especially if you talk about love. Love makes us Love makes us, uh, love inspires us, but love also inspires us to be stupid sometimes. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I, yes or no, tell me if you confess right now that you've done dumb shit over love. I know I have. I, I've just, you know, you can't trust a big butt and a smile. You just, man, shoot. I don't, I would say that, I would say I got tricked by somebody else, but then I, the truth is I tricked myself. All right, so number five, no time for consideration. A prospective spouse entering into a premarital agreement must be given time to review it and think it over before signing it. If the groom hands the contract and a pen to the bride just before she says, I do, the agreement is probably invalid. So you must give your potential spouse time to review the agreement. If you do not give them time to review, then it is not going to fly. Six, invalid provisions. Although a marital agreement, a premarital agreement, can cover just about any financial aspect of the party's relationship. It cannot in any way modify the child support obligations that either spouse would have if the marriage should end in divorce. Any other provisions of the agreement that violate the law would also be invalid. It is possible, however, that the court would strike the illegal clauses and enforce the remainder of the agreement. So for those of you who are out here balling, either making money you know, or about to go make money, and you're going to become a big target and you're going to have a bunch of people coming at you uh, that want to be with you. Suddenly they think you're the ha most handsome man in the world when they think you got a little bit of money. When I got a little bit of money, I suddenly became more handsome. I don't know how it happened. It was like it was very surprising to me. But suddenly the women that looked right past me were were giving me googly eyes across the room. And I thought like Bill Bill DeVoe, I thought it was me, but it wasn't me. It was actually it was actually the fact that they maybe saw something there. I don't know, but I can smell a gold digger from a mile away. So I don't, I, that didn't did, did, did phase me at all. However, here's the thing. Um, in your uh, it, it, uh, prenup, even if you sign the prenup, you still have to pay your child support. You cannot get a prenup. That says, um, I owe you nothing. I don't owe you. know, I, I'm going to write you a check for 50K and it's a wrap. You can't do that. If the state says you have to pay to support your kids, then you're going to have to support your kids, which is good. I mean, it's good. Who the hell wouldn't want to take care of their kids? Right. So so child support is a funny thing. Right. And, you know, you can't argue with the concept of child support. Like you can't leave the kids in the projects just because because you decide to move out. But I think what, what does become I've seen a lot of stress. For people who are upset, not so much about the amount, but for the fact that they feel that it's taxation without representation. They're, they're upset over the fact that they're writing these big checks and they don't have any say in where the money goes. And, and so um, I think it's a matter of me, not so much me telling you what to do. It's a matter of me telling you to make sure you research to know what you're getting into because you can't walk away from your child support. Also, you cannot put clauses in the contract that are not legal. So as much as some of the fellows might think this is fair, you cannot put something in there that's say, saying like you must have sex with me once a week. Right. I know that y'all I know that people do. It. Let's just be real. People do that money for sex trade all the time. Happens all the time. Men who have more money get more ass. We know that. Right. Uh, but you can't trade the ass for money. You can't do that. It, it just it, it doesn't work or whatever it is you want to put in the kind like you can't. You know, I don't even, I don't think you can put something in there like you have to cook for me once a week. Like you can't do things like that. So if you sign a, a prenup, you have to make sure it's, it's, it's solid and it's ironclad. Number, let me see. Number seven, false information. A premarital agreement is valid only if it is entered into after full disclosure by both parties. So you must fully disclose your income, your assets, and your, li your liabilities. If one prospective spouse provides the other with information that is not true, the agreement is invalid. So that means that if you own $100,000 in Bitcoin and you decide you don't want to tell your spouse 
about the Bitcoin before you get married and she finds out later or he finds out later, then he could go back and say, this prenup is invalid because you own that Bitcoin and you told me you didn't have it or you told me you had 10,000 in Bitcoin, but there was really 50,000. Um, you did this kills the whole agreement, right? What else? Um, incomplete information, failing to provide pertinent information is as bad as providing false information. Uh, number nine, no independent counsel. Your potential spouse must have their own attorney review the document for them because they're, they're, they're because their separate interests are at stake. The both parties to a premarital uh, contract should, in, in, at least in some states, and in some states must actually be represented by their own attorneys or the agreement will not be enforced. So a good precaution is to make sure that they have their own lawyer. So when they sign the deal, uh, they know what they're signing. Uh, and then number 10 is unconscion unconscionability. Let's see. It says it's it's true that you can agree to give up your right to inherit from your spouse, which you should you would otherwise be entitled to do upon your spouse's death. Even if he or she left you out of a will, you can sign away your right to spousal support if you should end up in divorce court, even if the spouse your spouse makes 10 times as much money as you do. <coughs> You can even agree that your spouse gets all of the property and all and you get all the bills if that's what you want to do. But if the agreement is so grossly unfair that one party would face severe financial hardship, which is a very vague term, very vague and ambiguous. You got to watch out for those vague and ambiguous terms because that leaves them up to the interpretation of the judge. Right. What is severe? What is a financial hardship? You know, had, you know, what's a hardship to one person is it's just, you know, life is expected for another. Right. <coughs> the court is unlikely to enforce the agreement if it's unconscionable. So basically unconscionable contracts are generally found invalid and premarital agreements are no exception. So so don't think that because you got a prenup, everything's good or because you have a prenup, everything's uh, going to be great. Um, I saw a lot of brothers uh, on my Instagram. I, I put the post up on my Instagram. If you want to see good conversations, go follow us on Instagram. Uh, it's, it's the real voice Watkins. It's it's really my Instagram is not like anybody else. It's not like stupid stuff. It's like actual stuff where I'm asking you to think. Um, and uh, a lot of brothers were mad. And I thought it was interesting to kind of think it through and analyze it. And one of the things I concluded that I really believe to the core of my soul is that the best prenup you can have in a marriage is to invest in making sure that your marriage works. I'm not telling you to get married or not get married. I do believe that if other people pressure you to do something you don't want to do, then you should not do it. Uh, you know, uh, I know we have a society where everybody, oh, you got to get married. You got to get married. <coughs> well, let's just be real. Um, a lot of y'all know I have never got married. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean I won't get married. You know, I, I love that woman. I knew. It's going to happen. I'm just going to tell you, it's going to happen. But um, I wasn't letting anybody pressure me into it. Why? Well, because even when I was 23 years old, I was pretty damn smart and I could read and I would read and I would observe and I watched. And I was like, well, if marriage is so great, how come, how come I'm seeing so many divorces? If marriage is so wonderful, how come I see people that look financially devastated after it's over with, emotionally drained? And, and, and so it didn't tell me that marriage was something that you shouldn't do. It told me that marriage is something that people don't think carefully enough about. It's not something where people prepare. Because to me, if you, um, you know, if you're in a situation when it's done, like like Garnett is, I'm, I'm sure Garnett would have a lot of complaining to do if you ask him about the situation as well. I'm sure his wife would have a lot of complaining to, to do about him. So that would say that it would be hard for them to argue that, oh, yeah, but but still getting married was still the best decision I ever made. I doubt they would say that. Right. So I would almost just say to you that. If you're not going to do it, then don't let anybody pressure you to do it. Um, but if you do it, do it right. Um, you know, it's a business deal, a business contract. So as a business uh, partner, you want to make sure, one, that you are that you yourself have prepared yourself to be the best business partner you can be, whatever that means for your marriage. And then, two, that you pick a business partner that can stick it out with you. Like New Edition used to say, tell me, baby, can you stand the rain? Because if you uh, are used to walking through hurricanes and you uh, marry somebody who can only live in the sunshine, who freaks out when a drop of rain comes out of the sky, then you will be uh, in a situation where you feel financially fucked. And that's just the honest to God truth. So uh, just like starting a business, you know, you don't st you don't start a business with somebody who isn't committed to growing that business. Uh, you don't want to play on a basketball team with a player 
who, uh, who, who, who wimps out every time the score gets close or every time the team gets behind. Same thing is true with the game of life. You don't pick a teammate who don't know how to play or who doesn't have the guts to fight through tough situations and adversity. Right. Or at least if you are if you are, if you a punk ass who gives up too easily, at least pick another punk ass who gives up too easily. But I would almost argue that you're probably wasting your time trying to do marriage. Marriage is not marriage is not for soft people. It's not for the weak hearted. It, you know, I watch my parents. My parents are celebrating their 45th wedding anniversary uh, in October. Forty five years. I saw my parents through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s and the 2010s. And I watched them grow together. I watched them. Uh, submit to each other. I watched them uh, endure things that would have caused divorce in most families. I watched them remain consistent with each other. I watched them go ride or die for each other. I watched them fight through the difficulty and the agony. I watched them do a whole lot of shit that most people would not do. I watched them do a whole lot of stuff to stay together that most people would not do. So everybody says, oh, I want that romantic happily ever after like my grandparents had. But a lot of y'all ain't even about that life. A lot of y'all ain't about that life. So just be honest with yourself. Whatever it is, just be honest. And if you ain't about that life, then don't be about that life. But if you are about it, then be about it. If you're going to get married, then make sure the shit works. If you're going to get married, go study, learn how to stay married and find a partner who will do the same. Read a book about it. There's books out here on how to stay married. There, there's books, there's there's counselors and therapists out here that can help you fix your problems. But but don't come into the situation when you ain't ready for it. It's like, it's like me right now. I'm training for that marathon. I, if I'm not ready to go through some pain to get to, to run 26.2 miles, then I need to just sit my fat ass down and shut the fuck up. I shouldn't even be out there unless I am mentally prepared to go through a kind of hell that I have never experienced in my life. Right. So so just, you know, I'm not saying marriage is hell. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that you're going to run into some difficulties and uh, and, and you got to be ready for that. OK, so uh, given that that's the most important investment you'll ever make in your life. You want to research all your investments before you make them, because marriage is one of those things where it can make your life wonderful and great and extraordinary. Or it's one of those things that can ruin your life and kill you. I've seen people die because they married the wrong person. And when I say die, I'm not. This ain't figurative. This is literal. I'm talking about literally dead, cold body, six feet underground, dead with two young kids. I've seen that happen to people that I know. So if you do it, just make sure you're ready. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure you protect your investment. That's what I'm saying to you. I'm not telling you whether you should get married or not. I'm just telling you whatever the fuck you do, do it right. Do it right. Go 100 with it and don't let anybody talk you out of that. All right. So anyway, that's it. Um, uh, hey, Rebecca, good to see you. Rebecca is a brilliant accountant out of D.C. Very smart black lady. I have a lot of respect for Rebecca. All right. So uh, hit the, please hit the thumbs up button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, also, if you're interested in things like love and relationships, I, I believe black love is one of the most important things in the world. Uh, we actually made a movie. Uh, you know, we have a film division, Boyce Watkins Films. I talked to you all about building. Well, it would be stupid for me to talk about building if I wasn't building anything. So we actually have a film distribution company called Boyce Watkins Films. And uh, our, our, one of our latest projects is called The Black Love Blueprint. And I would love it, love it, love it if you would at least go and check out the trailer at theblackloveblueprint.com. T-H-E, that's theblackloveblueprint.com. It was directed by Dorian Chandler out of New York. Best young director I've ever seen. Uh, executive produced by S.T. Brown. S.T., she used to be one of the bosses at Ebony Magazine. I don't know exactly what she is doing right now, but she's into a lot of real amazing stuff. And uh, also... Reminder, uh, I'll be in Chicago next weekend. So if you want to come to the investment seminar in Chicago, you can go to drboyschicago.com. Our master class meets every week. That's drboysmasterclass.com. Uh, we have our financial workbooks for children, which you guys have seen. Uh, I, I have one around here somewhere. Uh, feel free to go check that out at financialworkbooks.com. That's financialworkbooks.com. So uh, I mentioned all these things because these are the things we have going on. We have all the tools that will help you to do whatever it is you want to do. Um, and I'd love to have the honor of being one of your teachers because I think I'm damn good at what I do. In fact, I, I'm not, I don't think I know I am. <laughs> anyway, but I, and I, but I know I love you guys and I appreciate you very, very much. And I will see you all soon. So uh, have a good day and I'll talk to you soon. Be good. Peace.